Peterson, and this is Drinking in Bed. I'm here with Jerry James Stone and his beautiful little cat, Lola. Uh, we're here drinking uh, Ambeth. Uh, we're having their Grenache, which is actually a Grenache blend. Oh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's called Priscus. Oh, Priscus but is it, the name, sorry. It's yes. okay, but it is, yeah, it's a blend, it's a blend. Uh, it's, a, it's a Grenache blend. Uh, it's Grenache, Vonnier, uh, Rousson, and Marcel. Um, which are all uh, Rome varieties, if, for those of you that don't know. Um, this is a very Rome-centric winery. Um, Rhone blends are one of my favorites. <laughs> so, yeah. But you love Paso Robles. So I do yeah. love Paso Robles. You know, I mean, <laughs> I went to school down there, and it's kind of funny. I, the whole time uh, I was in school there, I, I never drank. I mean, I didn't really start drinking until after college. Sure. I mean, <laughs> which is funny. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, considering my job now, which is eating and drinking. But, yeah, I... Um, you might find this surprising. I grew up in a household where my parents actually didn't care if I drank. So they're like, anytime you want to have booze and your friends want to have booze, you can just do it in our house. Like they rather <laughs> have me like be at their place than you know out somewhere where I might mm -hmm. drink and drive. And so that I think that sort of juvenile um, attraction to drinking just never hit me. You had nothing to rebel against. I had nothing to rebel against. Hashtag parenting like, tips. Exactly. <laughs> Hashtag parenting tips. Because they're like, you want to get trashed? Fine. You want to get stoned? Just do it here so we know what you're doing. And so the first time I ever really drank and got drunk, I was 25. Oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, use substance only when you're 21 plus <laughs> and yeah. legally. <laughs> uh, but anyway... Uh, this wine, uh, I know that this is a biodynamic wine, which you are all about. Yes. Could you explain that a bit? Um, so a couple things with this winery. Um, yeah, they're biodynamic, which is great. So biodynamics is, as we've explained before, is a sort of kind of extreme organic type thing. Um, it's Organics is really about what you can't use. It's about not using pesticides, not using herbicides. So you like, don't do that, don't do that kind of thing. And in all honesty, like I am not a fan of the organic standard because I don't think that it actually takes into accountability things like location and there's other factors outside of just using herbicides which create a quality product. Like how do you treat your workers? And that's a whole long story <laughs> that I won't get into. But this winery is biodynamic and um, what, what that like biodynamics is somewhere like around I don't know. It's kind of like voodoo type thing. You um, you prepare these like. Pre you make these preparations, essentially, biodynamic preparations, which um, start with something like a combination of like chamomile tea and other herbs and cow manure, and then you like stuff this mixture into a bullhorn, and then you bury it in the earth for, I forget how many months, and then you pull that out of the earth, and then you make a tea from that, and then you spray the uh, grapes with that tea, and um, which, you know, it's... It, so it's pretty hippy dippy. <laughs> yeah, and it, it works well for this winery because that's something that they have there is um, they try to make it a very natural environment. So they have you know sheep and they have cows just kind of roaming. And that's how they take care of weeds as the cows come through and yeah. the sheep come through and eats it. Um, they use the manure obviously for their mixture um, to fertilize everything. They're farmers. Um, yeah, mean, they're exactly. farmers. They're farmers up. first, um, and that that's what makes. Their wine so special is that they're, it's all very single. Everything is being used. They have produce that they use as well, which they is. They eat the cows. Like everything. <laughs> if you're a vegetarian, which is very sad. Yeah, but, but if you're not a vegetarian, at least, they're doing, at least they're doing it <laughs> the, a good way where yes. the cows have a great life. Uh, they have free range chickens as well, which roam the property. And all of this leads into this environment. Um, they have other, besides just the vines growing, they have uh, other plants, like they have olive trees, they have all these other different plants that are also growing there. Um, and it makes it a really great environment and it helps where, you know, uh, you were like mentioning hawks uh, can live in the trees and that's what takes care of a lot of rodents and a lot of the insects are there with uh, different ways that they take care of that. Right. They have bees on their property. I think they, they have eight different beehives um, right on their property. So it's, it's a very nice natural environment for this wine to be growing in. Well, and, and eight different beehives doesn't really sound a, a whole, like a whole lot, but it's a really small farm and this mm -hmm. is sort of like, if you're, if you're in California or you're coming to California and you're going to be in the Central Coast, which I highly recommend checking out. It's a beautiful area. It's mm -hmm. right on the coast as it sounds. Um, great food, great wine. Um, visit this winery because it's really, this is what small, like 
winery farming is all about. Like, well, how the, many cases did you say a year they make? It's I think very like small. I think they're only producing three thousand or so right now, but they don't want to produce any more than five thousand. Once they hit that peak, they're going to stop because they want to remain small and they want to kind of remain in touch mm -hmm. with the product. And that's actually, I mean, I, just to rant don't a little bit. Don't overwork the land at all. Yeah. Don't overwork the land, but that's what I love about wine. Like, because the the people that grow wine, like they know their product from start to finish. Mm -hmm. It's not like growing carrots where you like ship it off to you know whoever for processing to you know shave them down and make little baby carrots it's like you actually know the whole product you grow the grapes you ferment it you bottle it you sell it to the customer and i don't know there's just something like really romantic about that aspect yeah. that i just really love about wine if, um, if you are going to check them out though it is by appointment only so yes. make sure if you're going down there and tell them that i say you. say jerry james stone sent me and I want to fucking drink your wine. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tweet him first, at Jerry yeah. James Stone. <laughs> yes, at Jerry James Stone. Say, at Jerry James Stone and Taylor24 uh, said, I, you know, your wine's awesome, your farm's awesome, you like do some weird voodoo where you cut a goat and kill a virgin or something, and we want to drink your wine. So let's, uh, yeah, let's, let's do drink, that Let's right drink some wine, yes. All right. And uh, as he always does to me, a very healthy pour. I think I get to finally return you the do, favor. You do get to return the favor. <laughs> that is a nice pour. All right, why don't you go ahead and... Give that a little sniff test. Now, I think I, I might be incorrect about this, but I, I do not believe that they um, they do any sort of like fining process on their wine. So you might notice that this wine is a little clouded, mm -hmm. and you can see the sort of the particle. I don't know if you can see that on camera. Well, on the camera, we can hear. But, um, you can definitely see. Particles I can like go take that. it up to the camera or whatever. <laughs> but yeah, it's it has this, you know. And the thing about that is. Um, Another thing that I'm really a fan of is unfiltered wine. And you'd be really surprised as to what goes into filtering your wine. It is not, and don't be like, oh, that's just the wine thing, because they do it to beer too. But, you know, we're talking about using like fish bladders and eggs and all sorts <laughs> of things that you think like, oh, this is just grapes. No, it's not just grapes. Um, so an unfiltered wine product not only is, you know, less usage of, you know, dead fish and eggs and all that kind of stuff. I mean, why use egg whites when you can eat? eat them. Who wants to, you know, like don't use them in your wine, like poach that shit. Um, and so the thing that also adds to it though, is there's all this texture to the flavor. I mean, it's just so much more of an experience, I think, in an unfiltered wine. So um, cheers to Ambeth. Cheers. Oh, what you got there? There's oh. a lot going on in this one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Again, uh, a very tang. Like very tang. Bad. Great yeah. thing, which is delicious. It's like just it. th so. This is um, this is a white wine for red wine drinkers. Mm -hmm. This is not, um, yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of I, I'm sort of like you're probably like white wine curious. You know, I'm I am like you know definitely a white wine and a red wine person. Mm -hmm. And it used to be, um, but this is this is a good a very good white wine. It's what are you tasting in it? Well, you know, it kind of has um, a little bit of a sourness to it that I actually kind of like. I mean, it's sort of like this kind of earthy, um, it, it, I don't know how to say this in a way, I don't know what the right word to say this is, but it feels old, but I mean like in a good yeah. way. Yeah. Like it feels like settled in and, you know, it's really, really, really good. Like yeah, a lot of I've, vegetable. I've, uh, I've really taken a liking to sour beers. Um, as well, and this kind of gives me that, uh, kind of gives me the flavors of a sour beer, yeah. but in a wine with a lot more fruit behind it, yeah. um, giving it obviously a distinct uh, wine taste to it, but it's, it's very delicious. The sour is exactly there. And it's not like, it's not an unpleasant sour, it's not like, you know, mm -mm. Sour Patch Kids or anything like that. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> you know, it's, it's not like, oh my god, that's sour. It's just, it's kind of like, just slightly there, it, mm -hmm. you know? Very delicious. Anything that you would recommend with it? Oh, man. You know, I would say you want to keep this one light. I mean, this is a really strong wine, and, um, man, I don't know. I have to think about that. I mean, my first thing is asparagus. Like, this this is the kind of thing that would just hold up to something really earthy, you know, with mm -hmm. a strong flavor, but um, it, I don't think this would overwhelm it. Yeah. The dirtier the better. <laughs> it, it is dirty. And I think earth, that's, the earthier the better. Yeah. And that's a, that, that Rhone blend, that sort of Grenache Rhone blend, you know, it's, uh, yeah, really nice, 
feels a little dirty. <laughs> um, but you know, like on a nice crisp summer day, I I think that we could definitely drink a few bottles of this. I think so. Okay. I'm Taylor. This is Jerry. Cheers. Thanks for joining us. Thank you.